uh, whether it's raw or cooked actually has a huge effect on how much, like the quantity. If it's raw, it's, I eat much less. I can do like two, two pounds a day. If it's cooked, it's more like four pounds of meat a day. Um, and I do organs as well. I do raw milk, I do raw dairy and eggs, uh, yogurt. Like, yeah, that's pretty much it. So today I'm here with Ted Carr. He's been a vegan for 13 years and raw vegan or fruitarian for about 10 years now. And we're just going to have a conversation about the differences in our views towards the optimal human diet. And maybe we'll find some common ground by the end of this. So I appreciate you, your willingness to do this with me. I emailed a few other fruitarian channels just because I, I was trying, I've been trying to do this, things like this for a while and didn't get any uh, interest. Nobody Everyone just said, no, like, I don't want to do that. So I, I really appreciate you doing this. Yeah, man. And just to be clear, you, the way you introed my um, dates, uh, I just want to clear the record. Uh, I was 100% raw vegan fruitarian for 10 years. And over the past, like, three years-ish, I've been incorporating some cooked foods. So mm. total vegan 13 years, but three years ago is when I started adding in cooked foods. Got it. Cool. Um. Well, th this should be uh, interesting. Do you want to do you want to share with me why you're, you're vegan? And I, 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 you know, we could talk about the ethics thing, and we could talk about the environment and stuff. But I, I'm more into the the health aspects of it. If you're fine, just focusing more on that. Sure, I'm actually yeah. I'm I've said this a few times. I'm not vegan for health reasons at all. Okay. I'm vegan purely for ethical reasons, and I'm fruitarian raw vegan for the health reasons. Okay. So veganism to me has got nothing to do with health in fact as we'll maybe discover in this video like there's some common ground between um what we believe about diets to be the healthiest but yeah i think a vegan diet for me is at least at least for me is just purely about ethics like i just don't like seeing animals get hurt it pisses me off and makes me really sad um uh, and i love eating a fruit-based diet because i think it's the healthiest way to go okay okay so can you explain why you think it's it's the healthiest way to go? And then I'll give just my thoughts and my viewpoint on why I believe animal-based or carnivores is the yeah, best way to go. Yeah, for sure. Please. Yeah, that'd be great. So for me, it really, it's all about, it's about instinct. And instinct is like, an, it's like an unlearned behavior, an unlearned drive, right? Like it's just our instinct to go to sleep when we're tired, it's instinct to piss when we got to go pee. It's our instinct to poo when we got to take a shit, right? It's just instinct. We can't control it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I'm instinctually drawn to fruit and I'm instinctually in awe when I see a wild animal. I'm like, wow, it's so beautiful. And I'm instinctually fearful of like a freaking cougar or a wolf chasing me, right? Um, and so and I'm instinctually drawn to climbing trees and I just, I love, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm just instinctually drawn to fruit and, and loving animals. So for me, it's just purely about instinct. Okay. I actually really like uh, the approach. Like I like the idea of instincts. Um, I'm very much the same way. Like if, if you're, you know, if you're sick and you're not hungry, well, why would you eat if you exactly. don't, right? Like it, you, it makes more sense to just simply follow your instincts instead of doing, going against your body's will. I, I understand that. And um, I do resonate with it. However, I think when you bring in the context of eating meat, it becomes a bit more complicated because we've been, conditioned in a lot of ways um that more primitive societies haven't so for example there you know a few years ago i wouldn't have ever dreamed of wanting to hurt an animal i would i would eat animals like like pay pay the hitman almost so like do it for me right i wouldn't want to kill the animal myself uh, because i i had seen a lot of the documentaries and it, it, it you know instilled fear in me but now i'm at a point where i would not i would not have a problem killing an animal because i've sort of deprogrammed myself because I, I do believe it's programming and the reason why i believe it's programming is because i've looked into a lot of different societies who kill animals without any uh, sort of sense of regret or worry because they don't have that those external forces that are telling them that the animals are suffering or that this is unnatural or that this is weird to them like there are tons of videos of the inuit just going in on a whole cow, like a whole carcass. And the reason why they're so willing to do that is because they haven't watched these videos that we've watched. They haven't been raised in an unnatural environment that's sort of um, vilifying animal 
uh you know animal raising which is not good i'm not saying it's good but it's so the, that's sort of the way i look at it i think our instincts have been altered in a way like our natural instincts have been modified so that the the instinct to not want to kill an animal is no longer natural it's not a natural instinct what do you think about that yeah good call i would if i was if i wasn't if i was hanging out with the inuits i was living with the inuits and i had no fruit around i had no vegan food around i would also have that same instinct because it's either me eat that animal or I die, right? So I'm not going to sit there and just die. If I'm starving to death, I'm definitely going to go hunt. I'm definitely going to go have that killer instinct and go kill an animal. Fuck yeah. I want to live, dude. And so uh, I've, I've when I was 100% raw vegan for those 10 years, cooked food did not really attract me at all ever, especially not junk food, especially not non-vegan food. But I remember this one time I was out for a big bike ride and I did a big swim and I did a big run and I'd finish off with another swim. And when I came out of the water and I didn't really eat much food during that big training session, I was so mm. fucking hungry. I was so calorie deficient. I came out of the water and there was this kid on the beach eating some like cookies, some chocolate chip cookies. And I had this instinct to go up to him and be like, dude, can I have like a cookie? Like I'm fucking like dying here. Like I felt like I was going to fucking die. And I didn't ask him, but I that drive to do it. And I've never, I would never normally have that drive to go say, hey, can I have a cookie? But I wanted it so bad. And then another time I was doing a water fast. I was like on day five or six of a water fast. I was at my cabin. And I was, of course, you know, starving. Haven't eaten for five, six days. And I was walking down the beach and I saw a dead deer. And part of me was like, dude, I could eat that right now. Like I could legit eat that. Like I felt like a slight draw to, towards eating that animal. And I've never had that before. I haven't had that since because I've never been in that situation. But I think if we are, if humans don't have enough calories around, if there's not enough fruit or vegan food around, then yeah, we will have that killer instinct. We will have the instinct to eat an animal. But I think if we're surrounded by watermelon and oranges and grapes and durian, like, fuck, I'm just talking about my mouth is salivating right now. Like, I can't help it. I get the instinct. Like when you visualize a lemon, <laughs> your mouth literally secretes the enzymes to break it down, you know? like instantly and so you can't help it um can you program yourself out of that sure i mean you can program yourself to do all sorts of things you know school shooters program themselves to go kill a fucking bunch of kids right you can program yourself to do a bunch of things but i think um our instinct when there's not enough fruit around it is yeah to go kill an animal but when we're surrounded by fruit i think we'll go for that first so you think that the instinct to kill an animal is only present in the absence of fruit? So like, is, so like on the hierarchy of desirable foods, you think you think fruit would be the highest, and then it would be followed by the other things? Well, there's only two foods I think you'd find in nature, and that this is where we'll, we'll agree. It's going to be fruit and flesh, fruit and animals. Yeah, like yeah. You're yeah. not going to go walk around eating broccoli. You're not going to walk around eating quinoa in nature. It's going to be you're eating apples, you're eating papayas, and you're eating boar or whatever's running around. You know. Mm. So all this other stuff is, I agree, is not healthy. Yeah, the, not yeah, the, anyways. yeah. You know, th this is where I'm actually with you. Like, um, there's never any vegetables in nature that you'd want to eat. It, it, it would either be fruit or meat, right? It would 100%. be one of the yeah. 100%. It'd be those That's things. It. But it. what do you what do you think about like? Have you looked at what fruit is now? I mean, th that, that this is one of my issues with eating so much fruit. It's many. It's like exponentially sweeter than it used to be because it's basically been genetically modified and hybridized so much like they just picked the sweetest ones and then bred them and continuously done that over generations so fruit is so sweet um and i mean sure like in a natural context if you had these sweeter fruits you would gravitate towards them even more but i just don't think like my, the reason why i believe carnivore is best is because it most closely parallels a natural diet um so i, I guess my question for you is like you can, I guess you could make the argument that fruit was a, a constituent of the natural diet. Is that is that what you believe? Like a big part? Yeah, I think I think natural diet. If you rewind, I don't know, rewind ten thousand, twenty thousand years or whatever. Okay. There'd be fruit and flesh. It'd be fruit and animals. So okay. You, the food pyramid would be like this, and it's like at the bottom you'd have fruit, and at the top you'd have animals, and you wouldn't have all this other crap that we have now. And so I think ideally, yeah, we go for fruit, and if it's not around, then we go for some animals. Okay. All right. I want to get into the natural thing in a second, but can you address the sweetness? Like, sure, yeah. it's, it's like 20, 30 times sweeter. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. More. <laughs> I saw you review Durian Riders video a couple of days ago. And according to Durian Riders, it's not sweet enough. <laughs> You're yeah. not going to add sugar to it, man. Yeah. So um, 
it's definitely sweeter. It's definitely sweeter. You know, I, I've got blackberry bushes in my backyard and I go picking berries in forests around here where I live in Canada. And I mean, the berries in nature are pretty sweet too. They're in fact, they're just as good, maybe even better than the ones I get in the store. So I don't, I wouldn't say all fruit is a lot sweeter. There's definitely some fruit in nature that's very sweet. Like, dude, I was in Hawaii and I was walking through a forest in Hawaii and I harvested a wild jackfruit away from everyone's property. I harvested a wild jackfruit and it was so good, dude. It was incredible. So you can definitely harvest wild fruit that's super sweet and super delicious, super filling. You know, there's tons of different varieties of durian out there that's insanely delicious and it's it's wild, wild durian. So I don't believe that all fruit is GMO or all fruit is hybridized and all fruit is 20x sweeter. Sure, a lot of it is and a lot of it has been, you know, deseeded and whatnot. But I still think that there is a lot of fruit out there in nature that's completely natural. That's not mostly what I'm eating, though, of course, because I do go to the supermarket. I do go to the grocery store and buy food there. Um, but uh, I still think I feel better on it than I do if I was eating just a standard vegan diet. And I don't know how I would feel if I was incorporating um, animal products into my diet, like meat into my diet. I haven't really ever experienced that. Or, I mean, I ate that way, not that, not your way, but I ate meat, animal products, to what age 18 mostly mcdonald's and burger king and shit but um yeah no for the past 13 years haven't had any flesh so do you take supplements yeah okay yeah cool um so okay i want to talk about the natural diet like do you think that we should be eating our natural diet it's optimal i think okay. it's optimal to eat our natural diet I, I totally agree. Yeah. For me to say whether we should or shouldn't, that's not for me to say. Like if some dudes in, in Korea or Japan or freaking Egypt playing his video games and he wants to smoke weed and eat Doritos, like I'm not going to tell him, dude, you should eat a natural diet. He does whatever the fuck he wants. Um, so I think it's optimal to eat a natural diet. Whether or not we should, it's totally up to each individual. Mm. So you think it's optimal to eat a natural diet and you know that an optimal, do you know that the natural diet had meat in it? So, so is is a diet that includes meat optimal? I believe that I believe vegetarian is not optimal. No, I believe in that. I believe our optimal natural diet is fruit, and when fruit isn't present, Plan B is meat. Okay, but th the problem is, um, well, it might be true. Like, I actually, yeah, like it, it would make sense. Yeah, I, I think um, we would have prioritized probably fruit over meat when available. I actually do agree with that. A lot of people in the carnivore space wouldn't, but it's a sweet taste, you know, like you you would you would want to eat that. I'm salivating just thinking about it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um even so, I still think that it was a minor part of the of the human diet. And the reason why I think that is because of what the human digestive system is. Like we have such a low stomach acid, it means that we had to have eaten lots of animal foods. There's no way that it would exist if we didn't. Um it, it like there's a bunch of other things as well, like a, a bunch of other things that m sort of make sense of the fact that we were eating lots of meat. Um, so like, do you think that we were eating mostly fruit throughout? Yeah, basically the, so the let's talk about that. So I posted a, a, a physiology chart the other day on Facebook and uh, I'm sure you've seen it before. It's got like shows like the carnivore, herbivore, frugivore and humans on it. Yeah. And one of those and it breaks down the differences physi phys physiologically between carnivores, herbivores, frugivores, whatever. And one of the differences it breaks down talks about is the stomach acid pH, right? And so what you just mentioned is humans have a low stomach acid and it's true. Our stomach acid, what is it? It's like between like one and one and two or something. Yeah. Yeah. But when we start digesting food, it goes up. So it goes up to like four or five when we start digesting food, whereas a carnivore, is also like one or two or whatever. When it starts digesting food, it stays one or two. So our stomach acid actually goes up when we start eating. So that's like one of those physiological things that's different between us and carnivores, the stomach acid pH. Uh, but on that chart I, I posted, there's like freaking 15 other massive differences between humans and carnivores that uh, I'd be happy to talk about if you want. Well, the problem is there's like fish that are carnivores, like they're, they're fish without teeth that are carnivores. So to say that there's a, a unique physiology of all carnivores and there's a unique physiology of all herbivores and humans don't fit into the carnivore category because this was talking they don't about have... this was talking about land animals. It specifically talked about having carnivores having uh, for, uh, walking on all fours. 
Well, I mean, I, I just don't think that we can basically look at the physiology of carnivores in nature and then extrapolate that humans aren't carnivores sure. because we don't have those characteristics. Even like, if we don't, even if, even if we exclude carnivores from that chart and we just look at us and we look at fruit, we, I mean, just look at our hands, dude. Like, look at the creases between your fingers, right? When you hold a banana, it perfect, a banana perfectly fits right in there. It's like each line in our finger lines up with the line of a banana, like the corner of a banana or the edges of a banana, I should say, right? Um, our eyes, the way we see color and the way we differentiate green from red, you know, green from orange. Um, the, the, our, our, our love of climbing trees, like we just, like I said earlier in the talk, like our instinct is to, is to eat fruit, but even our physiology, like, uh, do you want to talk about intestinal length? Like how come carnivores have such a short intestinal track, whereas ours is like, what, it's like nine times length of our body. Well, the idea is that we evolved from herbivores. We evolved from frugivores. That's so, if you, but that's if you believe in evolution. But forget, if we, if you put aside evolution versus like the theory of evolution, which we don't know, it's up for debate. And we just currently I, look at us now. Fair, yeah. We currently look at us now. Ours is currently like what? 9x our body length or something. Whereas a carnivore is typically is like 2x their body length. Well, we, we, have, we have the capacity to digest both. It's just, to me, everything more, makes more sense. And when, when we look at, what happens when people eat meat? Like basically, I like using the bathroom less, like having to rest, being able to rest your bowels more, and because meat is simply more digestible, more absorbable. I think all, and then just the effect that fiber has. Like we don't have the ability to ferment fiber and turn it into to fuel, um, and also just understanding what sugar does. Like all these things, it, it doesn't really seem to make sense that eating only fruit would have been a viable <laughs> option for humans. Let's let's talk about resting the bowels for a sec. I've never heard that phrase or term before uh what do you mean by resting the bowels well more bowel movements are associated with more basically disease um okay and so on carnivore if your food is more absorbable which meat is extremely absorbable and hold on, hold on, there's not hold really on, much waste I've, ne I've, I've never heard that before either so more bowel movements equals more likelihood for disease uh well like d different intestinal diseases like there's i think diverticulitis is associated with more bowel movements. I've never heard that before, but that's interesting. Uh, so back when I was 18, I was super constipated. I didn't ship for like a week. Yeah. Would that have been considered like optimal because I'm giving my intestines a rest? No, because that's that's constipation. This is not constipation. This is just this is just using all the fuel that's being inputted into it. It's, it's not the same. Okay. So let's say someone goes carnivore, right? And they eat like you eat, I presume which I would like to talk about. I want to know how you eat. Um, how many times a day should they, or would they expect to poop once they, like, once they've adapted to the diet, let's say like four to seven times a week. Okay. So about maybe once a day at the most. Yeah. I'm not even once a day. I I'm three, four times a week. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's really interesting, dude. Okay, that's that's cool. But like, um, but 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 it's not it's not a matter of being constipated. Like I'm not constipated. It's just I, so everything is shit, more absorbed. When you do shit, how long does it take for you to sit in the toilet and for it to come out, or do you squat? Oh no, I I just sit on the toilet. It, it's 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 out like it's just fast. Like it's immediate, and there's it's like clean. Like there's no problems cool. with it. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, okay, sweet. So when I um eat a fruit based diet. And I do intermittent fasting. I typically have like two meals a day. One at like 11 a.m. and one around like 3 p.m. And then the next day, I take about two shits. I forget what time. Usually it's like first thing in the morning and then like a little after that. So I only go maybe twice a day, maybe three times, but it, it's also quick. Like my shits take like five seconds. My pisses take like a minute. Um... But also it's clean. It's super clean and smooth, which I would imagine, you know, for eating meat would also be fairly clean. There's no, no leftover residue. Um, and I, I'd love to talk with, I, lo I would love to talk with the digestion piece because I, I know a lot of friends of mine who have gone carnivore, eaten the carnivore diet, and they say they instantly, they instantly feel better. And there's a lot of YouTube people out there claiming that they feel a lot better too. I'm sure you feel a lot better now that you're eating carnivore. But there's so many vegans that, say that meat is indigestible and that you feel like crap on meat and everything. So I'm curious if you want to talk about like the benefits of, of carnivore. 
for yeah. for vegans listening. Yeah, no, I think I think carnivore is best simply because of nutrient density. And um, like when you don't eat vegetables, I think we can both be, agree vegetables have anti-nutrients. So like, vegetables clearly don't want to be eaten. They they inhibit the absorption of of nutrients. Whether whether that that nutrition is derived from fruit or meat. I mean, do, do you not agree? No, I mean that's funny that you bring up vegetables don't want to be eaten. Meanwhile, you're like not about killing animals. They obviously don't want to be eaten. But oh, well, right, right, right. Of course, but but so they can run away while plants have to ingrain those yeah, defense mechanisms totally. within them. Yeah. So like whether you get your nutrition from fruit or from meat, vegetables will inhibit the absorption of minerals and nutrients. So when you eat carnivore, it's it's just pure nutrition. Like as as we both know, um, meat has everything that we need to survive. It has every single nutrient, and it's more bioavailable than it is in any other source of food. So I, I would just argue that animal products are best for human health. Also, I believe that carbohydrates are really not good for us. I, I mean, I think high blood pressure. I mean, high high um blood sugar rather manifests as diabetes and blood sugar basically causes glycation which do you think a, do you think do you think fruitarians are diabetic no no m- m- mostly not but the reason why they're not diabetic is because they're basically starving um in most cases like i mean i think you would even agree most fruitarians you w- w- however you want to argue like whatever you want to argue is the cause of it but they end up getting very very skinny and it, it's basically like looks like starvation for for I most of what lot, i've seen okay so, okay so uh so that's fruitarians i asked about being diabetic do you think a lot of vegans are diabetic um no because it's also starvation like the, the, they there's a lot they, of fat there's a lot of fat uh vegans but there's but most of them just get skinny like the great majority of them get skinny i would say you would say but no i know a lot of fat vegans dude it's it there's a there's majority of vegans I'd say are overweight. Do you think so? Yeah, majority of vegans got a little punch. Well, it's, well, it's, it's so rare to see a fit vegan dude. Like most vegans are either are either fat or like too skinny. It's rare to see someone like proper fit. Um, but I say in the fruitarian community, default is skinny. Cooked vegan community, default fat. And by fat, I mean they have a little punch. Well, I mean, in all, in all fairness, a lot of the people who go vegan are already fat because most people are fat anyway. So that's so fat anyway. And we do. If you have you ever had vegan junk food? No. That shit is so addictive. You can't stop eating it. It's really? got the right amount of salt, sugar, oil. It's crack, man. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I'd say most vegans are overweight. Most fruitarians are underweight. But but the whole thing about fruit causing diabetes i think that's or sorry sugar causing diabetes i think that's um i i wouldn't agree at all well here, here's the thing i mean diabetes is basically just like the fat cells not being able to accept more insulin like they they, they just become so fat that they can't take it anymore so um it, you know like what in most cases i would say it's 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 more like refined sugar and and, and refined grains and people are just in in seed oils right like people are just getting so fat that they can no longer take in more. I think refined sugar is a big part of it. I'm not saying fruit is a big part of it. It's, it's more the processed stuff. But the thing is, in the context of a fruitarian diet, where you're basically not, uh, like it's it's very difficult to get fat, if not pretty much impossible. Um, diabetes, it can be, it can diabetes be done. Is, it can be done. It's fucking hard though. You on a fruitarian diet, you have to load up on dates, bananas, and avocados, like heavy. Like you gotta. Well, yeah, avocados and minimize cardio. If you do that, you'll gain weight on a fraternity diet for sure. Yeah, well, yeah, it would be like combining sugar and carbs. I mean, uh, rather sugar and fat, like to, um, that when would you be. The... Com- yeah, you don't need to combine them. You just need to eat a lot of them. So you could have like your dates and bananas in the morning, like three thousand calories worth, and you could have another thousand calories of avocados in the evening, and you four thousand calories that you'd gain weight so quickly on a fruit diet. It's not comfortable. Yeah. Well, it's it's just not not very heard of, and um, so yeah, I, I guess. But, just, but in the carnivore space, most carnivores aren't overweight either, right? Right, right. But I I think I think that the actual look of the people in the carnivore space are very different than the look of people in the fruitarian or vegan space. Like I think the carnivore space, it's they 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 look healthier in my opinion. Like from having looked at all sides, but um, I mean that's not that's not really a relevant marker, I, I guess. The reason why, like, and more reasons why I think carnivore is so good is because the results I've seen and they never fail. It's like that I I don't see people go carnivore and not do well. 
but I see people go vegan all the time and not do well. I or, see um, I see people go carnivore and not last. I don't I don't really see that too often. I mean, I see it much more com- often with veganism, despite the fact that the amount of vegan options are just so ubiquitous. Like there's so many more of them than there are of carnivore options. And yet people stray f- away from veganism like 10 times more often than people stray from carnivore. I, I think that would actually be an That's accurate probably metric. There's, it's probably because there's 10 times more people attempting the vegan diet. No, no, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying per like per unit, right? Like it, it's about it, it's a lot more people straying away from veganism per say thousand than it but would be. I know be so many. Carnivore. I know so many long term vegans. I know so few long term carnivores. Yeah, because there's way more vegans. Like you, because you, because you but, don't know but, any but, but you, you, just, you don't know you any short term carnivores but, either. But you just said yourself like there's so few options for a carnivore diet. Right. So, so it's, like. Like how do people, like how how would that be enjoyable long term if you're just eating? I mean, I'd be ha- well, happy to happily get into what you're eating, but how how do people sustain that if it's so limited? For for health. Just for health. Yeah. But it's not enjoyable. Well, I, I wouldn't even say it's not enjoyable. I think people really enjoy eating meat. I think it's one of the most enjoyable things there is. I I certainly um don't miss the lack of variety from eating plants. Let's um, talk about your diet. Let's talk about your diet. Let's get into this now. Now I'm now I'm super curious. Uh, walk us through a day in the life of, of how you eat morning to night. Well, like, look, like right now I have this, it's like, I just eat the raw meat, like straight out. The you thing. eat the raw meat straight yeah. you do now on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, just like, just like raw meat. <laughs> no, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! So, bro, uh, walk us through how this tastes right now. Scale of one it, to ten. It, it tastes like nothing. Okay, so how the fuck is that enjoyable? Because I feel amazing after. I feel like I'm just incredible after I but eat it. But it tastes like nothing. I know, but I feel good after. Like whenever I eat fruit, I don't. I don't feel good after. I feel like fogged. I feel like I can't work all day. When I eat, when I eat just meat, and I, I'm like super busy right now, I can just I can just work all day because I feel like I'm 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 more alert. I'm more. Um, like filled with, with nutrients do you drink coffee no cool what are, what are your thoughts on stimulants it's terrible sweet okay back to your diet sorry so sorry go on morning tonight how do you eat um i wake up in the morning sometimes i eat sometimes i don't like usually i don't i'm not i'm not for fasting at this moment i just but i it, sometimes i do it inadvertently so i'd say i probably eat around like 11 11 12 most days and like I, right now I'm at school, so raw is more convenient just to not cook it. So it's, it's, it's a bit harder to, to cook stuff. So I just have, I'll just eat the meat. But if I'm at home, I might cook burgers. I might cook the meat. Uh, whether it's raw or cooked actually has a huge effect on how much, like the quantity. If it's raw, it's, I eat much less. I can do like two, two pounds a day. If it's cooked, it's more like four pounds of meat a day. Um, and I do organs as well. I do raw milk, I do like raw dairy and eggs uh yogurt like yeah that's pretty much it two meals three meals four meals two or th- it's closer to it's two it's usually two a third maybe but usually two yeah me too it's really interesting what you said about cooked you eat more i did uh orange juice island for three days one time uh, multiple times and day one i just did raw orange juice fresh pressed drank that and I drank like two cups and I was super full. I was set to, it was good to go. Two cups of orange juice. Next day, I didn't have any oranges. So I just had like the store-bought orange juice, just pure orange juice. And I had to have four cups to feel the same way I felt yesterday on two cups. Third day, went back to my fresh pressed, two cups, I was full. It's crazy. When you cook it, you just lose like so many nutrients. Your body needs to take more in of it, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like... A lot of people in the carnivore space kind of delude themselves into saying, oh, cooked meat is the same thing as raw meat. Just like a lot of people think cooked plant food is the same thing as raw plant food. It's not even close. Not even like close. Heat, heat, heat denatures so much stuff in, inside whatever food. And yeah, people don't really understand that. Yeah, interesting. So so uh, the organ meat, do you eat that raw too? Yeah. Do you have videos of you eating that? Yeah, I think so. On, on your current YouTube channel? I have, um, I sh- I have videos because I, I had to make um like a little compilation of what I eat in a week. Um, 
I have stuff eating raw liver. You should, yeah, you should definitely do a what I eat in a day video, man. I show that. You'll no, I did. I did like a what I eat in a week video. Um, yeah, like, do you want to see like me eating raw liver? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see this. Yeah, like I, like it's just raw, it's just like a raw liver. And how does that like, taste? That that tastes good, I think. It, it actually, I actually enjoy the taste of raw liver. Okay. And I, and I feel amazing after. Like, it's crazy how good I feel after liver. <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense though, because it just like you, you, our, our bodies respond to nu nutrient density. And have you, have you, have you ever eaten durian? No. Bro, we gotta get you a good durian, man. If anyone's in LA watching this, head over to uh, can I say your school name? U UCLA. Yeah, head over to UCLA and drop this kid off a durian. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 19. 19. Drop this, yeah, drop this guy off a durian, man. He needs a good durian. Um. Dude, when I eat durian, it it I feel like it's not even a fruit. I feel like it's like a a gift from the aliens. Like it's a gift from above. When I'm eating it, I'm just like, it's insane how freaking good it is. It's otherworldly. It's so fucking good. And 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 when I'm eating it, and when I'm eating it with my friends, we're always just like, mmm, mmm, mmm. Like we're just we're so vocal about how good it is. Uh, I don't really see people have that same kind of vocal response when they're eating meat. Typically, they're eating meat and they're kind of quiet about it. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think that's a good thing. Um, I've done a lot of research on like stimulation and basically thing that's things that have that tantalizing effect. And I think any sort of brain stimulation like that is actually harmful. Um, and it kind of makes sense. Like you, when people watch screens all day and they um, get quick hits of dopamine from TikTok or Instagram reels, it's it's almost comparable to the feeling of getting a super stimulating feeling from eating fruit or something else with a lot of sugar or oils or with that perfect combination of salt, sugar, and oil, like you mentioned. And I think constant stimulation or basically any stimulation for the most part, um, besides very particular like niche areas is bad. And that's another reason uh, that I think raw meat is actually very, very good for us. There is no taste to it. And you you, you feel good, but I think humans are not meant to be stimulated to the degree that we are. And, and, and like, this is this is not, of course, the core of my argument. It's just a little supplementary thing, but um, it's just a thought that I have. I definitely agree. We're not designed to be, I, I should say, I agree that it's not optimal to be stimulated to the degree that we're stimulated with TikTok and stories and reels and shit, for sure. But when you're eating good during, have you ever been in love? Yeah. Do you remember what it feels like to look your love in the eyes? Yeah. How's that, how's it feel? Okay, well, it, it it's stimulating, but I think that's I think sex is one of the few places where we need that. Forget it, sex. It, Forget sex. How does it feel? I'm I'm, 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 I'm saying eyes. I'm saying I'm saying in a relationship like that. Like when you're in a when you're in a, a relationship with another person, like like in personal relationships, that's one of the places that should be reserved for stimulation and it shouldn't be in other things in life. It should be, it, it, it's, it's supposed in a natural context, stimulation is, is reserved for a select few human activities. It's not, it's not going through life, constantly looking at your phone, constantly stimulating your brain with sugar. Like that, 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 that's my opinion on just um, like how humans should be with regards to stimulating our brains. But how does it feel when you look your love in the eyes? It feels amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it feels so good. That's, that's how it feels when we're eating durian, man. It feels I'm sure. It, I, it, it feels it feels right. It feels right. It, it just feels right. Like it feels like the glove just fits the hand, you know? Um when you're eating durian, I, I to me like I've had very few experiences where I've had definitely had some spiritual experiences with eating fruit. It's very rare. I've maybe had six or seven like truly spiritual experiences and uh they most often happen with durian. It's just, it just feels like, like I look at sharks. Sharks are designed to eat what? They're, uh, I don't know. Like they, they, they're carnivores. Like they, they eat. Sharks eat fish, right? Right, right. Fish. Yeah. Cows eat what? Grass. Horses eat what? Grass. Right. Yeah. And hay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, birds eat what? Like little, like insects and stuff. Yeah. Worms. Yeah. So when I list off those animals and I think humans, I'm like, I just think durian, like humans eat durian. Like that is like our species specific food at the, at the top of the fruit pyramid. I think durian is like the ultimate luxe food. Um, 
I just, I, I just think it's so like I know we've kind of gone all over the place with the, I guess that the, um, the way we're doing this, which is fine. But yeah. I just think, I just think naturally humans are are designed are designed to eat meat, and we did eat meat. Like, I think we did eat meat too, for sure. There's no like, question. Like a, we ate meat. No but question because we because like meat has been the thing that's almost glorified. Like eating meat and hunting animals has basically been glorified for uh, millennia. And even in the cave paintings, it's just it's just a, a bunch of humans surrounding a large elephant with sticks and knives trying to kill it and these are these are the things that they're painting they're not painting fruits because they're at pain- that they're- point at that point it's life or death at it's that just- but, the, but the point they're going to hunt is because it's life or death it's either that or they die was when they're surrounded by fruit i mean dude there's fruit paintings too there's lots of beautiful fruit paintings with like naked women surrounded by fruit and people freaking get off to that like that's gross and anytime you go to a deli Anytime you go to a deli or anytime you even like see like meat on pictures, there's always like a tomato in there, some parsley on there, some like live living fresh fruits and vegetables around the meat to make the meat look better. Like, well, he, he, never, he, it's rarely ever just the dead piece of flesh, you know, <laughs> the, the dead piece. Yeah. Well, I just don't, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I mean, like, I've, have you ever been in a, I mean, obviously you have, there's no fruit trees everywhere. Like it just doesn't Hawaii, seem viable. In Hawaii there is, in Costa well, sure. Rica there is, in Costa Rica, Hawaii, and Panama, so, certain so, places, certain so, places well, where we do, certain places where we can walk around naked all day long and even sleep naked. There also happens to be fruit trees everywhere. Up where I'm in Canada, hell no, we're not meant to live here. Okay. So you think, so you think we originated from the places where it's warm and we had a bunch of fruit around there and that's... I don't know where we originated from but I know we're optimally designed to walk around or optimally designed to live in these warm places near the equator for sure. Okay, well I think optimal design is relevant is irrelevant. I think what's more important is where the where most humans consuming mostly fruit. Because if the answer is no, which I think it very clearly is, then right there you know just by extension that eating mostly fruit if the natural diet is best is optimal then eating fruit pr- predominantly wouldn't be optimal for us it, it doesn't Why make sense that, sorry? what was your reason for that okay so if most humans did not eat mostly fruit which I, I think is i think is reasonable because to say that most humans ate mostly fruit then you would be saying that we were concentrated in like costa rica and hawaii and all near the equator all those... I'd, say, I'd say we were concentrated near the equator it could be all around the world near the equator Sure, but even in that case, it's having eating most of our energy, get, driving most of our energy from fruit, even if we're near the equator, just doesn't seem like a, a realistic thing that happened for most humans. I, I don't think most humans got most of our food from fruit. And in that case, since we both sort of agree that the natural diet is optimal, then if like if you accept the premise, which you may or may not, then eating mostly fruit just wouldn't be best for us. It would make more sense to eat only meat. Or mostly meat because meat it's it's between meat and fruit as we both sort of um figured out why would why would most humans not be eating fruit i don't get it well no we would be if it was there i don't think it was there why not because it I, it doesn't make sense why it would be like have you have you have you been to hawaii yes i yes i've been to hawaii have you ever have you ever taken a shit full of papaya seeds and then come back like a week later and see what happens there's a fucking mm-hmm. papaya tree growing dude Every time you eat papayas and take a shit, you grow a papaya tree. Well, I, I'm every like, time you eat, every time you eat guava and take a shit, you're growing a guava tree. I mean, I've I've, I've driven like down down um Maui, and there's all the mountainous regions on like one side of it, and then there's the ocean on the other. And okay. in those mountainous regions, th- there's there's no fruit growing. Like I I don't I don't think people I don't think there was much fruit. I don't. It just doesn't doesn't make sense to me. My my we're talking about intuition, right? intuitively that's not a scene that makes any sense talking like we, instinct talking about instinct not intuition instinct fine instinct it's my it's my instinct to, to, to not to not to not <laughs> believe that is not, instinct is not guessing instinct is acting instinct is a behavior fair yeah it's a behavior. Yeah, so right. anyways every shit you take in hawaii when you're fruitarian you're planting fruit trees every time you're taking shit in costa rica when your shit's full of guava seeds or whatever you're you're planting those um so the fact that we're now spread out all over the planet, that's, I mean, who knows how that happened. Um, that's anyone's guess, tectonic plate shifting and spreading us apart. And I, I think, yeah, the, a big reason why we've been able to survive in these places, like like the Inuits do, is because they're eating meat, for sure. Um, but I, I think I think a big place where we agree is that, like I said earlier, like the two most natural foods are 
meat and fruit. And the fact that people can survive on just meat, the fact that you're still alive right now eating that raw meat to a lot of people is like insane. It's crazy. Just like for me, the fact that I'm able to survive on just fruit is insane and crazy, right? So you and I are like at on, on ends of the extreme, I guess, right? But um, I, I guess what's cool, like as much as I don't agree with hurting animals and killing animals, I think it's really cool what you're doing and you're you're putting out this message saying, hey, you can survive on on a meat diet. And and you're fucking brave to be a 19 year old who's doing it. At, you're probably the only one at your school who's doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. But meanwhile, like you know that like the Inuits are doing it. These are the other cultures that are doing it as well. Uh, are they are they doing it on raw meat? Um, some yeah, some no, or like a mix. I think I, th- I think Inuit do a fair amount raw. Right. Um, and you said that, yeah, you said that before we started recording, you said that you want to go live on a farm. Yeah. Do you want to go live on a farm and just what grow animals and kill them and eat them? Yeah. That's like the ideal vision for you. Yeah. So interesting. There's two. There's two. There's two visions that that uh, most people have. Or there's there's a vision that a carnivore person has. There's a vision that a fruitarian person has. The vision for a fruitarian is like Garden of Eden, rocking around naked, eating fruit with their lover or whatever. Vision for the carnivore is like got their own farm. Animals are penned up, and uh, you're just slaughtering them each day and eating them. Or do you slaughter them like once a week and then you eat them? <laughs> So it's, it's funny that like, no, it, yeah, it, it, it depends on how many people are there. It depends on how long you can sustain yourself off a single animal, depending on the amount of people that are with me. Would you only want to raise and kill animals or would you want to go hunt them in the wild? I want to go hunt them. So you, do, you, do you want to have your own animals though as well? Like egg yeah. and chicken and stuff? Yeah. So what animals would you want to keep in your uh, farm and what animals would you want to go hunt? Chickens and la- Chicken and sheep to keep in the farm and then go hunt whatever's there, like bucks or maybe wild boar, just whatever's there. And and do you want to do this in, in which country? Somewhere in Eastern Europe, if not in the, even in the States would be fine, but I'd prefer to go to Europe. If you were to do it in the States, where would you do it? Like Texas, Virginia, like Kentucky, like any any of those. Just, just, just have been like a plot of land for myself and other people. Cool. Would you have fruit trees there too? No, because I don't think the fruit is is what we used to have. Like, and and I I don't think fruit is, you know, I I'm actually one of the more lenient people with fruit in the carnivore space. Like, there's a lot of people who say, well, any fruit is is going to kill you. Like, you shouldn't have any fruit whatsoever. But I'm actually, I think, I think humans are animal based. I think we have been animal based for a very very long time. Um, I'm not sure about evolution theory either, but I I think that humans have been animal based for however long we've been humans, and but I do give leeway to some fruit. Like I think it may be 80% animals, like that, that should be the, the standard. But then whether that 20% is more animals or fruit, it kind of depends on your location. I think if someone's in really hot weather, then a bit of fruit is fine. I still have a little bit of fruit, like once or twice a week with some yogurt, just because it tastes good. Like no one can deny that fruit tastes good. <laughs> I just, I just, I just don't think it's optimal for us. Like, I, I, why? I don't think, and okay. the reason, the reason why I don't think it's optimal is because I don't think we had access to it. If we, uh, that, that, that's like, that's what makes sense to me. We didn't have access to these sweet fruits, and the amount of sugar that I'm getting from a few berries is probably comparable to the amount of sugar we would have obtained from a lot of natural fruit ten thousand years ago. That's that's the way I look at it. What is it about our physiology as it is today that tells you? meat is the way to go because we can because we can survive basically eating only meat and there but yet there aren't all the essential nutrients that are in fruit so but what is it about i'll ask it again what is it about our physiology our physical physiology that tells you that hey we are designed to eat meat um there's a fair amount of stuff like our gut morphology the, the, the the basically um there's sort of a trade-off like it's it's interesting because a lot of the people I, I talked to this I talked to um about this thing, you know, veganism versus carnivore, say that we were eating vegetables. In which case you can easily say, well, no, humans weren't just going around on our hands and knees eating, pulling green plants, doing that all day, because we wouldn't have had time to basically develop into basic humans that we are today. We wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to care for children and do things like that. Um I think just so physiologically, I don't think we need to resemble carnivores. Again, it's just the way that um, 
sort of like the human body processes nutrients like everything is more new, uh, bioavailable in meat that, that's just the, the simple truth we can thrive on meat physiologically i don't like do you mean um like the way we look like is that is that more what you're referring to i think we can totally be carnivores i think it's very possible we can we, we don't need claws and fangs we can stab animals we're advanced enough to do that so just to, to say that we're not carnivores simply because we don't have um, fangs and claws to go lunge at an animal well there are other means by which we can make that happen so is there so, anything about our physiology that tells you where meat is the way to go I, I meat is a way to go not it's not corroborated well by our physiology in my opinion it's it makes a lot of sense because of the simple nutrient density and the fact that we can live on exclusively meat but we can't live on exclusively fruit i mean there are things about our physiology but, but, but you can't but you can't live exclusively on fruit well not with not without supplements you can live exclusively on fruit without supplements i've got friends that are doing it how do you? It would be. I I would advise them to take supplements. Just that I was. I would advise you to have supplements, just for like you know. What well, 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 reasons? Well, what do you think I should supplement? I don't know too much about a carnivore diet. I just know that. Um, I mean, perhaps vitamin C, just a guess. But uh, I know people say you supplement with vitamin C even on a fruitarian diet, just because that's how important vitamin C is. But uh, yeah, in terms of what you should supplement with, that's a good question. Maybe something that carnivore diet would be low in, like but, vitamin, but, C, for, like vitamin well, C, for example. Well, I mean, that, that's kind of the thing. Like, there's really nothing that that we're we're deficient in because we do get vitamin C. Um, if you eat, if you eat organs, which people on carnivore should, you should eat the whole animal if you're doing carnivore. Then uh, there's really no problem with vitamin C, and the people have tested their vitamin C levels after long periods of carnivore, and meat has a fair amount of vitamin C in it, so it's not um really necessary i i actually just because th there's a study that i reference when uh looking at carnivore th there's like a fair amount of stuff i can really quickly share my screen it talks more about the physiology of why we're carnivores that i just couldn't really pull from the top of my head if you yeah let's I'll, go I'll, 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 I'll show really yeah. i'll show i'll show really quickly yeah let's go into physiology yeah physiological evidence Ooh, okay should we read this out loud or what um that's a, that's a lot of text you don't know where to begin yeah yeah no it just lists things off okay let's, like, let's, i'll skim i'll skim through quickly see if there's anything yeah um so bioenergetics like it's a more reliable caloric source basically yeah, but that the more reliable caloric source has nothing to do with our physiology that's talking about the benefits of meat i'm wondering i'm cur purely curious about our physiology i don't i don't know if there's going to be a lot of stuff on here i mean the, the, there's a expensive tissue hypothesis where we have larger brains and that wouldn't really have been possible with carbohydrates that's talking about how meat is benefiting us it doesn't talk about how we right now are physiologically clearly designed to eat it well br br brain size declined during the again uh, it's like like it, it, it wouldn't really have made sense why our brains declined if it wasn't due to the um, introduction of more plants um, and like less meat because if, if eating if eating meat if stopping eating meat made our brains smaller then you could sort of rule that out to be the probable cause of why they got larger um like we're, we're very adapted to fat oh okay, here's a question for you here's a question i'm always curious about this one so you said uh okay physiologically there might not be anything glaringly obvious about why we're designed to eat meat however you said just because we don't have fangs and claws doesn't mean we can't just grab a, a tool and kill an animal, right? Right, right, yeah. Okay, so uh, I have rabbits near my house. And I'm curious if if I was to put you in my backyard with uh, any tool that you wanted, maybe let's say it's a spear or something, um, how would you go and grab that rabbit? It'd be hard. It'd be much easier to hunt a large animal, which is what we were doing. Like large mammoths, elephants that we can, that are slow. That you could just basically corner and just stab by yourself or with a tribe the tribe okay got you so for me like I, I made i was i made a video many years ago talking about the benefits of a fruit-based diet and one of the top benefits was how freaking convenient it is just to go and grab fruit and eat it like it's so simple but when you yeah, look yeah. At, like when you look at what goes into eating an animal it's not really convenient you have to hunt the down you first got to find it then you got to hunt the thing down 
and then you have to um deal with it you gotta like you gotta take off all the hair and and shit you don't eat the hair do you no no but don't 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 most carnivores in nature eat the hair on the animals don't they just rip right oh. through it we're we're not you, you can't say all carnivores are, are like this um don't all should, carnivores eat hair though i don't know i it, but it doesn't matter though because we're not to, to, because not all carnivores are the same obviously okay so um, even if even if hypothetically all carnivores did eat hair it would still be fine if humans didn't that wouldn't like lower well, it. well not all carnivores not all carnivores eat hair there's plenty of carnivores in like oceans that don't well, I guess there's no hair in the ocean. It's, it's, it's a stupid point. Yeah, it's, <laughs> a stupid point. Yeah, it's a stupid point. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. It's just that that wouldn't really seem to because, because to me that's another like instinct right there. Like when you go to the restaurant, there's some hair in your food. It's like instinct. Just like, it's disgusting. Get it out of there, right? Well, because it's be, because that's carnivore. Like, that's carnivore a, is like, oh fuck hair. I don't care. I'll take the guts and everything. Because we're we're the most advanced. I mean, we're, and that that's also human hair inside of food and word even if it's a dog hair it's like gross it's like oh, i don't want the dog hair or any kind of hair we just don't like how it tastes feels on our tongue well <laughs> I, I just don't i just don't see how how how, how that's really like a, a point like sure fruit is convenient but you know what else is convenient i mean there's tons of stuff that is good for that is bad for us that is also pretty convenient like it's just not it's just kind of a um sure. messed up logic so yeah it, it also like the the reason why I don't think fruit is good for us is, is very simple. I don't think we were having it like that. That's I'm so uh, just stuck in this belief that the natural diet is best. Like the, the, that's what sort of has enabled me to start understanding carnivore better. That's why I think it's good for us. It's not it. Well, it is because of the nutrient density of meat and the absence of vegetables and grains and seed oils and stuff like that, which is very beneficial as we both agree. It's, it's, it's the fact that I believe it's a natural diet and that's that's sort of been my uh, fixation, I guess, in un understanding all this. Um, right. There's more. There's like a fair amount of stuff here. I think I think the fat adapted thing is a pretty good point. Like we're very adapted to fat, and there are no herbivores. Or if we're natural fruit uh, fruit eaters, we wouldn't have been able to adapt to fat to the degree that we can. And also humans when like you say, when you say, sorry, also like breast you... milk has tons lots of saturated fat in it. What do you so, mean by what do you mean by fat adapted? Like it's very easy for us to burn fat for fuel and feel very, very good and, and be very, very healthy while doing so. Um, it seems like it's something that humans are supposed to be doing, use, uh, basically eating fat and then being in a state of ketosis. What do you do for fitness? Just curious. Not a lot. Like very have little. Ever, have you ever been into fitness, like sports or anything? Yeah, yeah I, was, I was playing soccer my whole life. Cool. What position? Center mid. Center mid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd I, you would be uh, you'd be the one assisting me. Yeah, you you striker. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. Um. Sweet, but how come you don't play anymore? Or what? What do you do? You don't do anything for fitness. How come? Um, I'm well. I, I do play soccer a couple times a week here, so like I'll just go to the field, play pickup, and that, that's always fun. It's just. I, I'm, I'm very busy. Like I have a lot of things that I have to do. And since I'm leaving school, it's like, I need to get, actually get things done now. Um, I, I can't really like slack around. So I try to, I try to do like a couple sets a day, just really intense. Um, sets? Yeah. Like, like some pull-ups or something until failure, just so I can do something, but it's, I don't do a lot. Like, and I, I, I also have thoughts on exercise. I think I think st anything stressful to the human body is going to come with the expense of longevity for the most part. So I think doing long spurts of cardio and stuff like that is probably not best for longevity. Do you know of any, uh, I'm just curious, do you know of any like carnivores, like, like yourself, like proper carnivores who are quite advanced athletes? Yeah. Yeah. Sean Baker is like, has world records. Um, there's other people on carnivore who have world records and rowing. The whole like one of the rugby teams, the national rugby teams, is carnivore. Um, it's just like there's not a lot because the carnivore space is not very big, so there aren't a ton. But um, like when I went carnivore, 
for soccer, I started being able to run so much more. Like, this is actually interesting. Um, You would find this interesting, I think. I was doing meat and fruit. So for six months, I did meat and fruit. And I felt really good because I cut out vegetables. And the vegetables were really bad for me. Like, they were really messing me up. But then when I went from meat and fruit to only meat, what I found was that taking out the, the you know, the oranges, the berries, all that stuff, the honey, like, that I was eating – I was able to run much more and I was, I felt much better. Um, And like, like it wasn't just like a little increase in my athletic performance. It was big. I could just run the whole game after that point. I felt like I could just tap into fast stores and I wasn't really hitting the wall anymore in my games. So that's another thing. Um, It's like how I feel is another reason why carnivore seems to be uh, something that I support. I just, I feel very, very good, like better than I've ever felt. And I've tried, I never did fruitarian fairness, um i don't know how that would go but um, i feel better than i did eating fruit and meat interesting interesting yeah i mean there's the thing the thing that's so fascinating about the carnivore thing and the fruitarian thing is like anytime somebody first goes carnivore they, they all seem to like say oh well all these benefits i'm getting and like all the same benefits people get on a carnivore diet seem to be the same benefits people are saying they get on a fruitarian diet they go i have so much more energy my skin's clear i'm sleeping better my digestion's better so it's almost like they're getting like the same freaking benefits as one another, despite being on totally different diets. I guess the one thing that's similar in the fruitarian diet and the carnivore diet is the, um, like you said, the absence of all the shit, but yeah. also the fact that like it's predominantly raw. Are most carnivores raw or no? No, no, most are cooked. It's like the great majority are cooked. Okay. Most Wait, I'm cooked. sorry. I actually, do you have time in an hour or like will you be busy? Because I have, I have to do a, a consultation right now. Um. Do you have time? By any chance, do you have time? Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. It is in an hour. No, I gotta. I also have a call. Uh, so okay. I'm I'm free. Uh, I'm free later though. Okay. Um. Let's let's do let's do later then. Let's like resume this. Cool. Sounds good. All right, man. I'll um. Can I'll, I'll, you I'll, an email? Okay. Sounds good. I'll see you soon. Peace out. Bye. So we're back after a little commercial break um yeah so i guess i guess um do you want to tell me i'm I'm curious we can each talk about some of the benefits that we've experienced um i'm curious to hear what you've experienced because because you started this like 18 19 right you're how old are you now i'm 32 oh you're 32 okay i got or i got that a little bit wrong um or no, no i started i started when i was about 19 um yeah, what what have what have you found, dude? So many benefits. Uh, I made several YouTube videos all about the benefits, but I guess the 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 main reason I started eating this way was to. We're back. Oh, sorry. The, um, was my my Wi Fi cut out? Um, yeah, you cut out. You froze up. Okay. Do you want to just say that again? Like, I'll 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 cut it out. You can just say. Sure, say sure, it. sure. Sure. Yeah. Um. So I get I'm so many benefits. It's probably like hundreds. But uh, off the top of my head, when I first started eating this way, I started eating this way because I had terrible acne. My acne was so bad on my chest on my on my chest, on my face, on my back. And I tried everything to get rid of it and nothing freaking worked except for dietary change. No topical ointments or lotions or potions or pills or nothing worked except yeah, changing my diet. And uh, I found that when I went fruitarian, my skin cleared up very, very quickly within a couple of weeks. But what I didn't expect to have happen was my personality and mood change as well. I used to be a person who would get angry pretty easily, very short tempered, very impatient. And I would snap and I'd have like temper tantrums. I want to like break shit. And when I went for Terry and I just instantly became so peaceful and so much more calm and so much more at ease. And, and that's something that's, that stayed true now um, ever since. So that's been a huge change. Like yesterday, my Instagram account got suspended. I have like 60,000 followers on Instagram. It got suspended and I was totally chill. I didn't freak out or anything. <laughs> and uh, I think if my diet was shit, I'd probably get I'd throw a temper tantrum or something. But yeah. no, that, that's I, I've had the same thought. I was like, well, what would happen if I get my YouTube taken down? It's like 
I'll be like, I'll, I'll, it's whatever, you know. Um, and then the past that would be uh, that would really destroy me. Um, it's the same thing for me. I think I think that's just a just a, such a powerful testament um, to like good health, the uh, yeah. your food and your ability to just discern between proper reactions and improper reactions, and just having your brain work in a more calm, natural human way. Because we're very clearly not to be so tight. We're not built to be so tight, strong, and be so um, reactive and just mm-hmm. have our buttons pushed so easily. Uh, so yeah, I found so, yeah, yeah. That, that's a big one. But then, uh, in addition to that, the, another biggest one was just digestion. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier how I used to be constipated, and then once I started eating this way, I actually started becoming regular. So. Clean digestion, like no gas when I'm eating just fruit. If I incorporate veggies, I get tons of gas. Yeah. But if I just go just fruit, I got no gas. It's freaking flawless digestion. So those are some of the biggest ones. And then I guess lastly is, is mental clarity. When I'm eating cooked food or uh, yeah, just other vegan food that I shouldn't be eating, if I just eat fruit, my mental clarity is freaking perfect. Um, and like you're saying, it's energy clean throughout the day. Yeah, I, I went... I went carnivore because of my skin uh same thing it was it got much better very fast used to have some acne and it was much more more red than it is now it was just very bad super dry too like my legs were on dry skin and it's all just much better now um that was and that was kind of exciting like it just was really just a happy moment like okay now i've you know my skin's healthy again and in addition to that it's I think the best benefit for me has been my mental clarity, which is has just extended to me being able to work more and just be more able to focus, which I really enjoy. And also um not being bothered by things, like you said. That's such a big one. I talk about that a lot. It's just blissful. Like I, I can handle conflict now. I know I know what it's like to be able to be in, in, in an uncomfortable uh, situation and not be too uncomfortable, you know. So, yeah, it, it's very, um, it's very cool. Uh, like it, so when I hear stories like yours on, on fruitarian diets, it just really makes me think, um, you know, it, it I, I admit it does because as much as I believe your story seems to be not really consistent with a lot of other stories that I'm seeing with vegans, um, I, I, I know that you're not like the, the way you eat is not synonymous with the way a regular vegan eats. It's not even close. You eat fruit and they eat cooked plant foods and Oreos and, you know, stuff like that. But still, it's just, uh, and, and, and the human body is very, uh, it's a very interesting thing. Um, it just make, it just makes me think. Would, would, are you ever afraid of getting, uh, eating a piece of meat that's like, off and gives you like illness um no no not really it, it, that, that's not really a fear i have and it, it's a fear that if it even was slightly in the back of my head it would be completely gone when i have my own animals which would be soon enough um i'm not going to be buying conventionally raised meat anymore i'll just be having my own animals which are much healthier and um e- eating the food that they're designed to eat is yeah that's not it's not really a concern for me do, do, do you just buy your food at the grocery store yeah, but it's gra- it's grass fed, um, grass finished, but yeah, it's from a grocery store. And how come people say that you should cook your meat so you don't get sick from it? Because there's bacteria that lives on the outside of the meat that they think could harm you, um, and I I don't think I don't think there's a problem with bacteria. Like the the whole bacteria theory doesn't seem to really makes sense to me if an animal's healthy then eating its raw meat is also healthy if an animal's unhealthy if you inject it with vaccines and you give it b12 or stuff and you put it in a little cage and you feed it grains all the time and you don't let it get sunlight well yeah it's going to be very sick and it's going to make you sick and it's raw meat is really be even worse because there's more of a concentration of the bad stuff in there Do you, do you ever add salt to your meat? No. If you cook your meat, do you add salt to it? No. So you'll cook meat, but just eat it like that with no salt? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you ever put like toppings or condiments on it? No, no. 
it's it, like cooked meat it has enough of a taste where it doesn't need salt like salt salt doesn't yeah the the, the flavor of the meat comes from like the, like the crust basically from from the cooked marks that's where all the flavor is um the salt's not really necessary in my opinion i don't yeah i i, I think it messes up messes up electrolytes if anything Would would you ever consider uh would you ever consider trying a fruitarian diet for a week or two? Well, here's the thing. Well, I don't know why I, w cause cause I did fruit and meat, and then I was taking out the fruit that that made me feel better, and it wasn't just an in my head sort of thing. Like I felt really much better when I didn't have fruit, and I had even messed around with eating fruit with the meat and eating it alone, or having like a meal where I had. Uh, only steak and eggs or having a meal later at night or for dinner for dinner time where it would be just only fruit and I played around with all that stuff and what I found was just it was just better not having the fruit at all like I I, I would do anything like I would the, the thing is I would just I, I'm worried about doing an experiment because my own biases will I think manifest into reality like I I, I really believe that a lot, I think I believe that a lot of vegans uh, go vegan and do well because they think they will. And that sort of placebo effect really has a powerful impact on their, their results. So that would be that would be, be a bit of a confounder that it's like it's not placebo controlled. Unfortunately, it's not possible for it to be it's just one. It's just an issue that will probably skew results. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know. No, that's a huge point right there. And uh, I'm glad you brought it up because I truly believe that the thoughts you think are more important than the food you eat. It's pretty po it's possible. Yeah. Or like they're maybe equal. Um, because if dude, there's a guy in the Guinness book of world records who literally eats metal, he eats metal and glass, he eats nails and screws. <laughs> like how? Like he, he dude eats fucking steel, bro. He eats steel and uh, he's not concerned. And then there's people who eat absolute freaking trash and they seem to be doing all right. And there's other people who seem to be, there's other people, dude, I know people, I know raw vegans who, uh, you know, die of cancer. They eat super clean, but they die of cancer. They get diseases and they freaking die or whatever. So uh, I think as important as diet is, I really think that our, our thoughts and our emotions are even more powerful than that. I think dude, I was living in Bali for a while and my girlfriend and I were there. And I was just on coconuts, coconut water and coconut meat for a good t uh, three weeks. Nothing but coconut water, and coconut meat. It felt great physically until her and I got into a little argument. And then some shit went down in Bali. I started getting really jealous because like she was hanging out with this, this other guy. And all of a sudden my digestion just went haywire. And I, I couldn't even digest freaking coconut water, dude. And it ended up one night going and vomiting in the in the toilet, just puking up all this coconut oil, this coconut meat. I couldn't hold it down because I was feeling so freaking jealous. My emotions were so the the emotion of jealousy was so poisonous that it poisoned me, and I couldn't digest the food I was eating uh, or drinking even. So it doesn't matter what, if you're eating watermelons or coconuts or homegrown freaking home killed slaughtered meat, whatever. If your emotions are screwed up your digestion is going to be screwed up too. And that's going to affect your, it's going to affect your health big time. Yeah. Like what you're eating. 100%. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree with that. Your no diet that you eat is going to be invincible to your emotions. It's not. Yeah. Would you, uh, would you ever add in animal products or do you think you'll be vegan until the day you die or like fruitarian rather to the day you die? Yeah, the only, I've talked to my friends about this. The only time I would ever consider eating meat, or the only, or, or back up, the only time I consider it ethical to eat meat is at least in North America or in Europe, even whatever, where like you can easily get access to vegan food. Uh, so this doesn't go for Inuits or whatever living up there. But if you're in an area where you can get access to vegan food and good fruit, fruit period the only time it's ethical to eat meat in my opinion is if there's roadkill interesting okay if so, you're driving down the road and there's a dead cow or a dead deer then go for it eat it. it's completely ethical 
if we were if we were driving down if we were together we were driving and we found a, a dead buck would you uh w w would you eat it with me i probably would really yeah. i don't see why not cool i don't see why not i would do it i would do it purely out of curiosity in the same way that i would um in the same way I've, I've drank my own piss out of purely curiosity. And how, how did that go? I wouldn't, it was, well, first my friend drank it. And then because he drank my piss, I was like, yo, if he's drinking my piss, I'll have a sip. And it was totally fine. Highly recommend it. <laughs> At least to say you're done. Just make sure it's clear and it's not yellow. And it tastes like coconut water. It tastes like nothing. Um, but I would eat it out of curiosity. Why not? It's completely ethical. It doesn't go against my, my, um, my values at all. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, dude, we need to go out and get more roadkill because I need it to survive. I need it to be strong. I need it to be smart. I need it because I need my brain to grow. I'm not into that whole thing. But if you and I were driving down the road and we saw a dead buck, then yeah. I mean, it's, it's, um, I do it out of curiosity. How about, um, what if you found out that the optimal diet was one that included animal products? Like, if like, I found out that the optimal diet included, um, again, it goes against my instincts though. So if I know something in, in intellectually, but I'm still grossed out by it, I'm not really down. Like I, okay. So like, 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 like if I find out today that piss is really, really healthy for you, you should drink your piss every day. I still wouldn't do it because I'm not interested. And it's the same way with superfoods, dude. People say, oh, goji berries are the ultimate superfood and blueberries are the ultimate superfood for antioxidants and, and you need this fruit and that food. I don't care. I don't care if a certain fruit is supposed to be better. I don't eat based on what they say is supposed to be good for me. I eat based on my uh, instinct. What do I want? So like, even if you believe it yourself, like um, you get to a point in your life where it's not, it's not instinctual to eat meat, but you still believe, you, you, you convince yourself that the best diet where you can live the longest includes animal products. So just so I understand, you still wouldn't include them because it goes against your instincts, even though it would be best in ensuring longevity. Do I have that right? In that case, if I truly believed, if I, if I truly believed that animal products were a good thing to add to my diet and I would live longer and I'd be healthier, is if somehow in some strange world, I lived in some village far away from good fruit and there was someone in our village who like every day he like walked up and down the streets for a mile looking miles for looking for roadkill. <laughs> and he just went and like scavenged some roadkill and brought it back for the community or something. Like that's the only way, but that's never going to freaking happen. So um, again, I would eat it out of curiosity's sake. I wouldn't eat it on a regular basis. Uh, at least not, not at this point. And I, I can't say for the rest of my life, if I'll be vegan or if I'll be fruitarian at this moment. And for the past 13 years, it's been blatantly obvious to me that were designed to eat fruit. Uh, and I've never enjoyed hurting animals. I've never enjoyed seeing them get hurt. I can't see that changing, although it might happen. You know, some something could happen in my life. And tomorrow I'll be like, dude, I want to go kill some, I want to go kill some buck. I want to go kill some boar. It could happen. I don't see it happening. What if you become unhealthy? I've said this before. I If, if I become unhealthy, changing my diet would probably be like a last resort type of thing because I think there's so many other factors at play when it comes to health. Like I said, the thoughts, the feelings, and then not to mention air quality, sleep, relationships, What's that? Um, oh, well, meditation habits, breath work. There's so many other elements that could, that could be at play. Like, dude, my dad eats the world's worst fucking diet, bro. He drinks coffee twice a day. He gets drunk every night, pretty much. Like he has alcohol every night. Um, and he's still kicking. He's doing fine. He's like in his late or mid, mid sixties or whatever. And I'm like, how is he healthy, relatively healthy in eating absolute crap cupboard food throughout the day? Like he only eats cupboard food, and microwave food and fast food. And he's still kicking, still, still rocking. Hmm. So I, I definitely think there's more to more to health than just diet. So if, if I did become healthy, diet would be like last resort. Cause I already Kind of like you said, like the placebo effect, the belief effect. I've already like got so much strong belief towards my diet being optimal that. Got it. It'd be like the last thing I would change. Hmm. If Italians, uh, we we froze, we cut out. Um, I, sorry, I was gonna say I met a lot of I've met a lot of unhealthy vegetarians, unhealthy vegans, and I also look at their lifestyle habits, and I'm like, dude.
they're super stressed. They're not getting enough sleep. They're not doing what they enjoy every day for work. Like they hate their jobs. They're eating all right, but they're not healthy based on all these other lifestyle factors. The relationships suck, et cetera. They're not getting any movement. There's a bunch of factors at play. Is but it, but it's, it's a it's a fair question. I'm glad you asked it. Is, is the diet thing your career? Like, do you, is that how you make money? With like, is the what? Like, uh, like consulting and YouTube. Like, is that or, or do you have a different job? I help. Uh, well, I started off doing that. That's how I got started. I started off helping people with uh, health coaching in the raw vegan space, and then I moved to helping vegans launch their online business. And now I'm slowly getting back into helping vegans build muscle because people keep asking me, Ted, how are you building muscle on a uh, fruit-based diet? So I'm slowly doing that. So it's, yeah, it, it's tied to my identity and people want to be more like me. So I charge for helping people build more muscle and make more money. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Does it, but um... I think, but I think, but I think even if, even if I were to change my diet, people would still follow me along to that new diet I was living on and I could charge for that. So it's not like I'm, eating this way because I get paid to eat this way. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. If, if I, I've, I've always had this, if I start adding fruit or I feel like, cause here's the thing, I'm never adding vegetables and I'm never having grains and never adding seeds or, or oils or anything like that. It, it would only, the only thing that would ever change with my diet is adding fruit. It's like the only possibility. Um, and so we are, are, are we still good? Or do you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. I got to go in like two minutes, but I can still hear you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just saying um, that's the only thing that I would ever sort of modify. And so, yeah, it's like always on a continuum. Like right now it's it's no fruit, but maybe it'll just sort of move. In. It, it, just, it just depends how I feel. And I've always been saying that I will be transparent with that. Like it doesn't matter if all the carnivore, angry carnivore people would get frustrated about that or call me a Paul Saladino or whatever. It's It's just, you know, that. I, I will I will be open with with what I'm doing. I don't think that I will end up adding fruit, to be honest with you. I just doing I feel very, very good right now. And when you feel good, there's no reason to change. You you usually there's there has to be some sort of catalyst that entices people to want to change their diet and be healthier. And for me, like I'm at a very good point, so I'm probably won't do that. But I'm always interested, open minded. Sweet, man. That's good. I, yeah, I like, I, I've watched a few of your videos and uh, I like your style. I think your channel is dope. I think your channel is going to blow up and uh, happy to have had this conversation with you, man. Hopefully you'll have another one in the future and uh, we'll see where we're both at. Yeah. It was great. It was great talking to you. Great meeting you. Yeah. Unfortunately, the past t 20 minutes has been like, kind of choppy and I, your Wi-Fi cutting out a little bit so hopefully the last when it's got recorded if it didn't get recorded we'll we'll shoot it again no it it, it did get recorded it's just going to be a bit choppy like you said my wi-fi is really bad i'm outside so it's not my fault <laughs> all right do we have a frozen it's still frozen yeah still frozen oh we're, we're good now but it's going to cut out in fucking five seconds anyway oh yeah no no i'm outside my wi-fi is terrible so um but yeah, it was great talking to you. The, the, the recording did go through. It's just going to be choppy. So, yeah. Okay. Right, man. Cool, man. We'll, uh, we'll keep in touch. Yeah, absolutely. It was great talking to you, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Sounds good, man. Peace, bro. All right.